Fall fashion is finally here and I'm going to break down how I approach fall looks with the fall essentials I recommend. So in general, I'm going to go for items that are more for the beginning part of the season where it's a little bit warmer and it'll progressively move more towards the colder climate where you need warmer clothes because this video is everything fall fashion. First garment is the crew neck long sleeve shirts or knitwear. So whenever it comes to these items, I would highly recommend you spend your money on something that is more premium, better constructed. Now just keep in mind, I'm talking about crew necks and long sleeves that'll stand out on its own. No layers, because I just think when you throw on a layer, it loses its touch. You might as well wear a regular tee underneath, unless it's knitwear. I also really like dyed crew necks like this one. I'm keeping it simple with this fits because I really want the crew neck to be the statement piece. Now you can skip crew necks and long sleeves all together most people do but when it gets colder just take a look around most people are going to be rocking hoodies and so this piece is a good switch up once a week or so all right let's talk about beanies now so first things first just keep in mind that it may take some time to find a beanie that fits your head shape here's an example i look terrible in longer beanies <laughs> but my girl she looks great in them See, that looks much better on you than it does on me. And so that's why I tend to move more towards the shorter ones like this one from Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to pick some up. But I think these beanies suit me best. Once you find one you like, an assortment of colors will do you wonders. Because beanies are a lower barrier of entry to stepping up your fits. They're more affordable and you can rock them in multiple situations. You won't have to spend more money on a different colored tee just because you want a variety of colors in your wardrobe. And that's why I love these. You can wear the same pieces throughout your wardrobe, but you utilize the beanie to add some color to a fit now obviously caps are great of course i'm definitely gonna be rocking those still but i prefer beanies because i like to wear glasses as an accessory because the beanie frames no pun intended the glass is much better than i think a cap does and of course it keeps your head a little warmer Now the next essential is what I call the comfort spectrum. And this is just a term I coined just to make it easier to understand. But this really mainly deals with your underlayers as well as accessories and footwear. So this should be made up of items that you already own, a tank top, a regular tee, a button up, and a hoodie. And so depending on the temperature outside, you're probably gonna rock a different underlayer, right? You know, if it's a bit warmer outside, you throw on a tank under your top layer, then you progressively move towards the other pieces if it's colder. So just keep that in mind the next time you layer. So let's stick to the coat as an example. This coat looks great with every single one of these underlayers and they all give the fit a different vibe. And so you can mix it up with different footwear, headwear, and accessories to achieve the same level of warmth. And so this fit right here with a tank top and a coat is just as warm as this overshirt with a hoodie. So just always keep that in the back of your mind. Take this scarf as another example. It can keep me just as warm as a hoodie would while giving me a different look. And that's the next essential, a scarf. A great alternative to a hoodie a few times a week or so. And so whenever you do get a scarf, just make sure you don't wear it with the hoodie. I mean, obviously you totally could, you can do whatever you want, especially if it's mad cold outside. But yeah, I just think it looks weird because a scarf does exactly what the hoodie does. You know, it hangs over the collar and adds a bit of detail from the backside and side view of a fit. And so when you pair it with the hoodie, it just looks a little bit overstuffed. And so you can get creative with it. You can't go wrong with a classic simple scarf. You can get more variety by going with a two-tone scarf like this one from the Plus J Uniqlo collaboration. Or you can go for something like this from All saints which is definitely not as warm but it can add a really cool look to a fit another versatile garment and probably a switch up for most of us is the cardigan this is like a perfect mix of knitwear and being a jacket and just like that knitwear piece i wore earlier in this video that fabric texture is the epitome of fall. Now with this piece, while it's somewhat still warm, you can cling onto a bit of that summer by having a lighter tone fit seen in this fit right here. Basically no dark colors, I'm wearing a tank top, you know, a good transition fit. And by the way, this cardigan right here, pretty sick, right? I think this is a good mix of summer and fall. I mean, you can really wear this in either season, which just means more bang for the buck. And this comes from the sponsor of today's video, No Jeans. So No Jeans is a relatively small brand. Just take a look at all of their options. It's designed in LA and Hong Kong. Shout out to HK, I hope to visit soon. No Jeans' focal point is within the vintage patchwork and embroidery design. My cardigan is the color block piece, which I got in a size four. And for reference, I'm five foot seven, 160 pounds. The color blocking is on point and the 
pops of text in different colors really elevates the standard cardigan and honestly your whole entire fit. And despite it being quite loud and definitely a statement, it's actually not as hard to style as you think it would be. So you saw in the first fit a more warmer, vibrant version. Now that it's cooling off and the leaves are starting to die, this looks great with the hoodie as the underlayer and paired with sneaker boots. This is a very versatile piece and definitely a brand you want to keep an eye on. If you guys are interested in this cardigan or any of their other cardigans, definitely click that link in the description and check out No Jeans. Thank you, No Jeans, for sponsoring this video. Now up next is of course, footwear. Who doesn't love a pair of boots or sneaker boots? But Chelsea boots will always be a great investment. I like to keep it simple with the black leather Chelsea boots. Here I'm styling it with some trousers, a button up and a coat. Clean and minimal, but I also really like combat boots. So whenever it comes to these type of boots, I always recommend you make sure they are tight fitting around the ankle area. That way you can cinch your pants with them if you like wider fitting pants. This gives your fit a really nice silhouette going from a super wide fit to very slim. And so here's a fit of me wearing it with a simple overshirt tank top, trousers, and here's me wearing it with just a plain hoodie and a crew neck. Now, the sneaker boot is also great. This one is the collaboration between a cold wall and Converse, super rugged and a sneaker you don't see all too often. Now, of course, my New Yorkers, Tim's are definitely gonna be your thing. I personally don't like the way I look in Tim's, but Tim's are also a classic. Now next up is the black and white crew sock. I love no-show socks, but you can kind of look out of place if you're rocking no-show socks and it's super cold outside. So add some warmth and a sleek transition to your kicks with some crew socks. Now our next one is an assortment of outer layers. So this is all your preference, but my preference lately has been vintage denim jackets. I got this one from my dad. He owned this in the 80s and 90s. They really don't make denim jackets like they used to. I also really love the gray or olive bomber jacket. Here I am styling it in this muted fit, complements it well. The overshirt and blazer can come in many different shapes and sizes. I really dig this one from Uniqlo. I have a cropped version and a regular version. Plus this blazer looks really good. And I also really dig this gray overshirt as well. And another outer layer I recommend is something with a longer length. So this can mean more overshirts like this one from a cold wall, or it can also mean a coat. It just depends on how cold it is. If you're gonna go for a coat, I recommend a black one or a gray one. And the last essential for a fall look is the understanding of color. So with spring, you guys know it's all about pastel color colors and lighter colors in general. These are colors with white added to it, so it feels more Easter-esque. Now with fall, you want colors that are more muted with gray added to it. Now this isn't set in stone like, oh, you can't wear pastel colors or your fit sucks. That's ridiculous. But let me put two fits together, one with lighter colors and one with more muted colors. Which one feels more fall-esque? Exactly. The darker one just feels more dead, which is typically how fall and winter is. But if you really want to keep it simple, just think about what fall means to you. To me, the first thing I think about whenever it comes to the fall season is pumpkins, okay? orange and green. And automatically that color combo goes hard on a fit. You can mess around with earth tones and all that, but ultimately that's all up to you. Just have fun with it. Happy fall. And if you guys are interested in any of the items I wore, I'll link as much pieces as I can in the description box below. Give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you enjoyed this, and until then, stay fly. Happy fall. Deuces.